We'll call the meeting to order. First uh, part of it is the public hearing to discuss the partial discont discontinuance of West High Street. Do you want to? So uh, to reiterate, there's a request by the landowner at the end of West High Street to uh, shorten the street itself, uh, bringing the end of the street in line with their property line. Uh, it's the property line that runs between their property and uh, Mary West's property. And we did the site visit uh, before our last board meeting to show the, the monument marker on the ground and where the property line runs and to see if there's any uh, questions there about location of line or what we're, uh, what's being requested of the board. So tonight's uh, public hearing is a time for public comment uh, on, uh, on the discontinuance of that short section of the road. Can we continue this since Mary West is in the hospital? Mary's in the hospital? Yeah. Oh, that's too bad. I understand. I just found out tonight she fell in. Mm -hmm. I, I heard from the scan that she no. uh, had fallen. Right. Yeah, I know she knew about tonight, and I was surprised to not see her here. Right. We, can we do that? Can we table that? Because I know she definitely had some concerns about it. I had, uh, Bob, I had spoken to Mary yesterday, and she was, okay. not mm -hmm. going, she was not going to be attending tonight's meeting. She wasn't? No, she said she already had um, voiced her opinion on um, the street, you know, her concern, and she didn't feel the need to attend tonight's meeting. Okay. You want to reiterate her concern that she shared with us at the site visit? Yeah, well, one thing I know that she was concerned about is the fact that if, if the, it is thrown up at the very end there, um, there's no place for anyone to turn around mm -hmm. um, because the, the, the owners at the end could definitely put a fence there, some sort of barrier there if they wanted to, a gate. And um, all the folks that now actually turn around, and whether it's legally or illegally, they use that, that little turn in there as a turnaround. Um, everyone from now on will, if they're not going to visit Mary in her driveway, they'll have to back out if they're not going to the end of the road. And um, Mary just didn't like that, that situation. And she says if she has friends visiting or whatever, um, she's concerned about them. And uh, I don't know if there's anything more than that, but it, uh, I'm not sure what the right solution is. You, you understand that, right? You remember? Yeah, that was her concern. It was all about people visiting her because there's only there's only the three houses on that road past the Noise Museum, I believe. Is that correct? Correct. And Mary's and the other. Uh, so Mary was concerned about people coming there and having to use her driveway to turn around rather than the end of the road, which it's certainly an area where you can turn a vehicle around. I wouldn't say it's a huge area, but it is. It can, certainly can be used for that. I'm sure it probably is right now. Mm -hmm. Well, we also, with the town snow removal process, we don't currently put snow that way anyway. We do we do drive up and then back drag it and then push it back away toward the police station. Well, they, they back into the, on the town highway, back into that yard. Back into and the yard. Right. They won't be able to do that though. What I'm saying is they'd have to come up with a plow and drop the plow and, and pull it back a truck length or something so they can turn around and back in there and then push the snow away. My, my suggestion was going to be to the board that if you uh, honor their requests and end the road at that property line marker, that it would be contingent upon the homeowners giving the highway department or giving the town an easement for the purpose of snow removal and, and uh, highway maintenance uh, in order to be able to back. They currently back in up the road. They back the road up right. and then they drop their plow and push the snow back out toward the street, toward Main Street. Yeah, yeah. We would need to have an easement for that. I can tell you also that the village water and light department will need an easement as well because they have a storm drain, uh, yeah. sewer drain, a manhole yeah. that would now be located on their property. So uh, discontinuance of that short section of road would certainly take the road out of their living room, uh, which would be appropriate. Um, but we would still need to have an, an, an I have the floor. So that would be my suggestion to the board is if in fact 
uh, you determine that giving up that short section of road is plausible, that it be contingent upon water and light and the town receiving easements for the purposes of road maintenance and for maintenance of the, the uh, sewers. Why are we having discontinuance of it? Why? It was asked by the homeowner to, to throw it up. Okay. Is there any other comments about it? I'd like to comment. David. This person is totally unqualified to make statements like that. How do you know that road was through their living room? It doesn't show it on the survey plan, but I was a registered survey right here. You make statements like that. You leave people to believe stupid stuff. That was just a figure of speech, I believe. Well, that's a figure of speech can be taken literally. I believe that Becky Gilson has done surveying on the property. Yes, did you, it's right here. Yeah. Did you and, look at where she says it is or could be? It's certainly not living. I take, I take offense to that. A survey. David, don't don't speak to him directly. Speak okay, to the I'm board. Sorry. I apologize. Yeah, and please, you know, make your tone a little bit better. You know, right. you're, you're you're pretty I'm out of order. I some comments about this. First of all. Can I use the microphone, please? We're happy to have you speak. Just be respectful of everyone. Thank you. Respect is one thing. Opinions are another. And a licensed professional is a third. I'm a licensed professional. And so is Ms. Gilson, whoever this Laws. Are you a surveyor, David? Yes, I am. I thought so. I'm registered in three states. I thought so. Vermont, Florida, and New York. And I've earned them all, none of them by reciprocity, all by examination and experience in all three areas, all three states. First of all, here's the Morris Downtown Plan that you're adopting or is adopted or in the process of adopting. It states in here that one of your criteria is the creation of new dead end roads is discouraged. That's in your own minutes and your own plan. If you take this survey and you look at it, which is what was done by Gilson, and it was done under the auspice of Farrell Joint Trust. If you look at it, there's enough room here to create a turnaround because it's also shown on undeveloped town of Morristown town land, volume 119, page 150. And I think at that meeting the other night, you said that that was not town land, but she says it is. So, you know, I don't argue that point. I'm taking her information, her research as, as fact. So I believe that if you were to discontinue the road at that property line. There is enough room to put parking spaces there. Are you not speaking not right parking, at the boundary, turnaround, around, right at the boundary there? Pardon? Are you speaking of right here at the boundary, right? That boundary there, David? Right here. Take, if you took this, these three parts, yep. and a car, our cars uh, is nine feet by 18 feet. Yep. So you're talking 27 feet by, by 18 feet. You yep. take and plop this right in here. Okay. And you can have yourself a hammer. Oh, you're, oh you're seeing right here. Correct. Ah, I got gotcha. you. But it's a bank right there, you know, with the. It's, it's not pretty, that much of a bank. I looked at it. It yeah. can be done. Yeah, you were there the same night. That's right. I looked at it, and it, could, it is possible if you want to do that. And rather than create dead end streets there, if the owner really wanted to do that and cut it off here, then I would think that as a part of this, and if they've got enough wherewithal to do this, they should be have enough wherewithal and interest to be able put a, a hammerhead turnaround there, which would basically solve your problems. That's something we could also do, right? Well, if you wanted to pay for all of it, sure. Right. But you're actually benefiting them because now, as you stated, you pull in their turnaround, back up, and go out. Right, so yeah. They're trying to stop that. Discourage that. Yeah. And so I would think that it would be wise and a prudent thing to say to them, if you want this, then put us a small turnaround in at that point and you know you've got you got what you want we've got what we need you've got what you want right that makes sense to me i don't know if they're willing to do something like that but that's it's possible there's something in the notes that i wanted to have explained if i could by the board it says in number 10 
that the end of West High Street is to be relocated to the northern property line of the Farrell as shown on the survey as per Morristown Select Board approval, autumn of 2022. Why would a surveyor put that as a note on their plan? Could that be explained, please? I do not know. I guess that would be... Which note is that? Number, Number 10. Right here on the, on the survey notes. That was, that's a note from Gilson, so she'd have to make an explanation. I don't, I don't know why it says that. Well, it says a select, there was a select board approval. No, I think it's saying mm -hmm. as per, like, pending. Right. It may be talking about this. Not per select board approval, autumn of 2022. So we're saying it's autumn now. Now. Oh, okay. Right. Or maybe yeah. when they did the map, it was. Right. And it's to be maybe they, they thought, thought it was going to happen sooner than mm -hmm. December 5th. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know? Okay. I'm guessing. I don't know. Well, I didn't know if there was an explanation that the board had. There. No. Okay. Nothing that we know about. All right. Well, that's pretty much the extent of my comments is that uh, the other thing I wanted to state is that as a land surveyor, um, if you go back to the colloquial times, most of the town roads, town village streets, public highways are either a two rod, a three rod, or a four rod road. Right, 14 feet and a rod. Four, 16 and a half. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah. yeah. 14, so six and she, for some reason, what I didn't understand in here as a surveyor, she, she just did research and came up with a 30 foot width. Which, mm -hmm. which was kind of unexplained. If it was two rod at 30, 33 feet, it would make a lot more sense. It would give you a little more room to work with. And besides that, it wouldn't move the monument, which is there and existing. There is no monument on the undeveloped town of Morristown land. And so, you know, you're not limited to, to that. So I would expect to see at least a two rod road there because most streets and villages were two rods. So most it must town go down over the bank there quite a bit then, you know. Right. Well, I don't know. She didn't find anything from that corner of square rock there. Right. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I would have, I would have, I'm surprised to see that it is noted as a two rod because most streets and villages are two rod. Most, most town roads are three rod and most county roads are highways. Route 15 and such are four rod from history, historical research. Okay. Thank you for your comments. Okay. Is there any other comments? Any comments on the board? How do you folks feel? Do we have to take any action tonight on it? We we're still there would be a, a a motion at a later date, not tonight. Tonight's a public hearing. You're just receiving information right. tonight. I, I just want to say, Bob, that I mean, thank you, David, for your comments. But I I do even on this map those lines. That this is mostly for the people in the audience that aren't looking at the map. But where the town road approaches this house, it is inches at best away Very from that porch, if not part not if not the porch being part of the road. So I, I just want it to be said that there's a there's a reason for this discontinuance, and that is that the road and the house are probably on the same footprint. I, you can't tell from this map. But no, it looks it further so away. It's so darn close. Yeah. In fact, the steps coming off of that porch, I'm trying to remember which way they were angled. I think they're angled towards Jersey Heights, so in which case the steps would be on the town road. So that's the reason for this. It's not, uh, I don't think I'd want a road that close to my house. Mm hmm um is there i guess i have a a couple of questions um one is there um a precedent um around um the town um creating easement um for plowing and sewer on um private land and um, is there a cost associated with that and are there potential pitfalls like um, potential future um conflicts that might arise um, from an easement like that. Um, and then my, I guess my other question would be in response to what um, David was saying, um, do we need a turnaround there? Um, I, you know, I know further back, there's the, the little horseshoe around the, um, the sculpture and the post office drop. Do we, is there a perceived need besides for Mary West? Um, is there a perceived need for a turnaround? 
Well, I think there's a lot of de delivery vehicles yeah, and things like okay, that yeah. that go up and turn around. Yeah, okay. Currently turning around in that right. dooryard. Oh, and then, sorry, my third thing was, um, from the town plan, from I understand, my interpretation of um, the town not creating any future dead-end roads, that's that we wouldn't approve, from my understanding, we wouldn't be approving more dead-end roads. Right. It's discouraged. It doesn't, it doesn't say we won't. It says discourage. This is our wording is always road, right, right? but then a town plan it says discourage. Creating, yeah, we're not creating a new one. Right. Yeah. So it doesn't say we won't. Right. Well, yeah. There's that. People right. hold our feet to the fire when we <laughs> certain yeah. words are said. So I guess <clears> I had three three questions and three questions. Uh, is there a precedent around that um, creating easement on private land? And is there are there any pitfalls associated? If we with usually that? have a dead end road, which that mm -hmm. one is, right? Mm -hmm. We usually make them have a place for us to put snow. Right. Right now we're not. We're backing in. Right, because we've never put snow there anyway. Yeah. But you're right. You're right. Yeah. Usually we look at it and say, okay, where are we going to put the snow? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's usually a factor in the whole thing. Mm -hmm. So I would think it'd be easy for them to give us enough room to back the truck into their driveway to drop down and clean the road down. I would think they would want to too. Yeah. yeah. My only question is if they plan on putting a the gate there, and that would stop any of that, any of that from happening. Well, that would that would be the purpose of the easement. It would require them to not put a gate there. If right. there was an easement granted, they couldn't gate that. Uh, okay. Or they could gate it back far enough so the truck could back oh, up. Gotcha. Okay. Mm -hmm. But that would take our, our part of the road and still have we could plow it. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. Any other comments? Judy, you have any comments? Can you hear us? I just, yeah, I just was wondering if Eric could um, state the uh, easement information again. Thanks. Yeah, my suggestion, Judy, would be if the, the board was willing to shorten the road to the designated property line, uh, that I would recommend they request an easement uh, from the homeowners for the purposes of maintaining the roadway such that our pickup truck could back into their, their yard far enough and then drop the plow to, to fully scrape the snow off the road. And then also by moving to the property line, it places one of the village water and lights sewer manholes on their property. There would need to be an easement granted for the water and light department to be able to access their sewer manhole. Would, would it if, for, if would you weren't part of those easements, then I wouldn't suggest you shorten the road. Would the easement also allow like the del delivery trucks to back in and so they wouldn't have to back down the road? So currently the road is a straight in shot. There, there are no turns off from this road. And where the road ends in the yard of the, the Ferrells, vehicles have been for years pulling into their yard on the town road, but then backing into the Ferrells driveway to make the turnaround. So, you're backing on a private property to make the turnaround, which isn't legal to start with, unless you have permission. So what about so, oh, sorry. I, all I'm saying is it's, it's, it, you're not necessarily changing the dynamics of the road by shortening it, because you currently don't really have the right to back around into somebody's dooryard anyway. Now, I don't know that they've objected over years past, but at this point in time, they're looking to have that practice <coughs> stopped by moving the property line of the, to end the road on the property line. But without an easement for us to be able to maintain the road for plowing and for water and light to be able to access their sewer manhole, then I can't suggest that you give up uh, that section of road. Mm -hmm. right. And that, you know, the fact that they want it thrown up tells, kind of tells me that they, if they want to discourage people from, from using that portion of their driveway, they would put a gate up or something like that. That would be like the ultimate way to discourage somebody that. I, I haven't that. heard anybody talk from, right. from the homeowners talking about putting know. a gate up. So. You know, Eric, that's a good point. When you look at this map again, I'm not sure how you can turn around there without driving off the road, Right. number one, and or driving onto their property because it's no wider at the end of that road than it is anywhere else. You'd have to back up. Unless this map is wrong. 
What, is, what about the idea of um, of treating the of having um, those three spaces added to, for to make a turnaround? Is there any? What were the costs? I, mean, I think that's an engineer question. Yeah. Have somebody take a look at it and see if it's possible and, and what it might cost mm -hmm. to do it. Etienne, um, just curious if, let's say, in the end of the scenario, this is a new development. Are there specific rules that you would look to that would govern this sort of situation better, like having a turnaround, being required, that sort of thing? I don't know. If it's a new road being built, or it's a road in a new development that they want us to, the town to take over, our road policy requires to have a hammerhead or a circle at the end of that road. This is not a new road. This is not a new subdivision. This is a shortening of an existing road. Uh, our road policy doesn't cover any such thing. The zoning bylaws require, I think, a 70-foot diameter yeah. cul-de-sac in, in that kind of setting. We don't Have you seen that? The zoning bylaws don't recognize hammerheads. You can take that. The, this whole process around, came know. up. They went in front of the DRB for multifamily use because they converted these. They're redoing the carriage house, turning into two apartments. So any conversion of multifamily use from a single family home requires a survey. The survey came out. The survey's into their front porch. They said, town, please fix your road. And they suggested just dropping back at the property line. So they're not looking to gate the road. They're not looking to do anything like that. They're just the survey as part of the DRB approval, which requires a survey. Uh, showed the prop, showed the road going into their porch. They said, we'd like you to fix that. As you've done with many other homeowners before, Tara Nolan is one on Ron Terrell, I think, or wrote a few others in the past. That's good information. So we, there's no action to be taken tonight? No, this is just an evening for folks to voice their support or concerns in reference to the action suggested. Is there any other comments, any public comments? About this. All right. We'll close this part of the meeting. <clears throat> Next, we'll call the regular select board meeting to order at 623. First on the agenda, are there any changes or additions, Eric? There are. We need to add a uh, permit for a uh, liquor control license request. From Rock Art Brewery. Okay. We need to add an errors and omission under new business. Okay. And delete personnel policy under old business. Thank you. More work to be done. <laughs> Thank you. I was afraid it was going to be a 10 o'clock meeting after I saw that agenda item. Yeah, 9.50 now. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> okay. Next, approve the minutes. Minutes of 11, 21, 22. I'll make a motion we approve the minutes from 11, 21, 22. I have a motion by Don. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Second by Brian. Is there any further discussion about these minutes? I have, yes. Um, there's two changes on here. One of them was very extremely minor under number one new business Stuart May's presentation mm -hmm. just worth noting it's still well south unified union oh yeah, oh, yeah okay Dallas. good catch I don't know why I would know that <laughs> I don't either the other one is <coughs> under select board concerns for Don McDowell on page seven it was um, just for the record, it was Katrina James that I met with. It was about Emily Rosenbaum's presentations, but it was Katrina that I met with okay. from Capstone. Yeah. That's it. Great. Thank you. <clears throat> Is there any other discussion? Um, I guess um, in number eight, the personnel policy. Um, we didn't, um, we didn't really decide on any of the major changes. Uh, it says some of the major changes include. Um, so I don't know if there's a way to uh, work toward that, where it indicates that we discuss uh, potential changes or. Just so we discuss them. Right, and so, yeah, instead of saying some of the major changes include, but um, just so that it's clear that they were. Hmm? Oh, 
suggested. Yeah, so yes. I, I just put proposed changes. Yeah, proposed changes. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. All right. Any further discussion on those minutes? All in favor say aye. 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 Judy? Aye. aye. Any opposed? <laughs> the minutes are passed. Now the minutes are of 11 28 22. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes from 11 28 22. I have a motion by Don. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Judy. <clears throat> Any further discussion? Yes, I wanted, I was going to ask. Um, it says Jess Graham was absent and participated by Zoom. So was she absent or did she participate by Zoom? I was. Is the new program, Judy? I haven't figured it out yet. So I put a notation there. <clears throat> Thank you. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Thanks, Judy. <clears throat> the motion. The minutes are passed. Now the minutes of eleven thirty twenty two. I'll make a motion to accept the minutes from eleven thirty twenty two. I have a motion by Don. Do I have a second? That's good. A second. Second by Jess. Any further discussion <laughs> about these minutes? Um, I like how the, I mean, being the one member participating via Zoom, I do like, I prefer the method where I'm listed under the members present, but there's an asterisk after my name. Yeah. So, thanks. Okay. I'm learning. I'm learning. Yeah. 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 You're crushing it. <laughs> Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Judy? Aye. I'll abstain. Okay, you'll abstain. You weren't there. Minutes are passed. <clears throat> Next, liquor control. Do I hear a motion to go into liquor control? So moved. Motion by Brian. Do I have a second? A second. Second by Jess. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Thanks, Judy. We are now in liquor control. Hi, Sarah. Um, Rockhart has submitted a special events permit for December 17th. It's an event at Thompson's Flower Shop um, for Salvation Farms. Yeah, that's brand new. The state has this brand new. I just got it this afternoon. It's like official. Yeah, it's all electronic now. Yeah. It's really hard to follow. I th think it's 8 to 11, but I know that they're really struggling filling these new forms out on blind people in general yeah. throughout yeah. the state. Does... um. You know if the police department has any issues with it? I have, no, we have no issues. Oh, Jason, you are back there. Yeah, we looked it over and no issues. Okay. Do I hear a motion regarding this? Make a motion we approve it. I have a motion by Brian. Is there a second? I'll second. Second by Jess. Any further discussion on this? All in favor say aye. 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 Judy? Aye. Any opposed? <coughs> motion is passed unanimously. That's the only one you had, sir? Can I have a motion to come out? Make a motion to come out. Motion by Brian. Is there a second? Second. Second by Judy. All in favor say aye. 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 We are now out of liquor control, back in the regular select board meeting. <coughs> Uh, new business. We'll do that first one to the Arizona missions first. Yeah. Uh, sorry about that. Mark Sutton, who was going to be speaking on your first agenda item tonight, was just texting me, so <laughs> trying to get him up on Zoom here. Uh, so the Arizona missions uh, relation to uh, James and Sheila O'Neill's property. Uh, they purchased the abutting parcel, which missed being combined. So you can see the uh, the change here in value. Okay, yep. They combined it with uh, another parcel valued at 50% per lister's decision for a 2007 reappraisal. Okay. Do I hear a motion regarding this? I'll make a motion we approve the errors and emissions certificate as 
Second. I have a motion by Don and a second by Brian. Is there any further discussion on this? Dwayne's here in the, the audience tonight. If you have any questions about this one, he has, he's prepared to speak to it. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Thanks, Judy. Motion is passed unanimously. All right, next we'll move to number one. Consider fee waiver for Copley Hospital. Sutton, um, I'm on the Zoom call. Can you all- How are you doing? Me? Welcome. Thank, thank you so, so much. Uh, so I'm here on behalf of Copley Hospital to ask for the waiver uh, of the uh, fee for the uh, DRB hearing that we had. So, <clears throat> um, so we, uh, you know, we're the community hospital, nonprofit community hospital. Uh, we went through the the um, <clears throat> zoning administrator process and then the DRB process, and and now we're concluding that. So we're we're looking for consideration to waive the the fee. Do you have any comments on that, Todd? Um, the DRB denied the request is regarding a sidewalk is a pretty simple project, so. They didn't get anything out of the hearing, and there are hospitals. So I thought there. I suggested Mark talk to you all because I thought the request was reasonable, but not up to me. I don't waive fees. Right. I don't waive recording fees, obviously. I just thought you might have more. Yeah, no, it's two hundred fifty dollars um, uh, total recording and budget. He's asking me to waive. They didn't get. They didn't get. The, they didn't get, get, get the project approved. Now. Okay. Is that common? What happens? Uh, for projects not to get approved? No, pretty much. It is. And this is a sidewalk project? It was, uh, it's part of the, um, uh, Mark can explain it better if he wants, but there's an existing sidewalk uh, out on the back side of the addition that is put on the uh, operating room. It's for, uh, it's for supply areas. And the addition assumes the, uh, basically the area of the sidewalk. And they were requesting to delete it and the DRV decided that the sidewalk should remain. Yeah. So, so if, if you're okay with it, I can uh, talk a little bit more about it. So. Um, the, this sidewalk was part of the original um, surgical center uh, construction project that concluded in 2017. Uh, this portion of the sidewalk is basically a, um, a maintenance sidewalk. It really is not really used for pedestrian access because it dead ends at parking spaces. So when we, uh, <clears throat> when we uh, proposed this addition, our architects and engineers um, uh, also agreed that they they didn't feel that we needed to have this piece of sidewalk in there because it actually creates a, a hazard around the end of the building. There is a approved in that same project uh, in 20, you know, that concluded in 2017, there's an improved sidewalk that comes down the uh, side of the building, crosses the driveway and directs traffic across um, to, to approve sidewalks all the way across to the parking area in the back. So we uh, we asked to have this um, omitted or not put back in uh, to avoid that uh, additional safety issue of people coming down that sidewalk and coming around the blind side of the back of the building. So we we had a meeting with Todd. He he didn't feel comfortable uh, granting that. So then he approved the uh, permit conditionally, and and then we came to the DRB. The DRB um, listened, uh, heard us for about twenty minutes, and then went into deliberation and, and the results I got back was they did not approve it. So so that's that's where we're at with that. Okay, any comments? Board? The hospital is considered a nonprofit. Yes. And that's correct. We've waived fees for nonprofits. Yes, you never named waived a fee for a non nonprofit for a for profit entity, but you waived other nonprofits at their requests. Yeah. And yeah. considering they didn't get their request, I thought it was reasonable. That sounds reasonable. Judy, did you have a comment? Yeah, I just want to make sure I heard that correctly. So in the past, the fees have been waived for nonprofits if the project hasn't been approved. Is that correct? Uh, you waived fees in the past for projects that have been approved and not been approved. Generally, for projects that have been approved as well. So especially since the project wasn't approved, I thought it was reasonable. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Right. Well, how do we want to sit? Here's um, I make a motion to waive the um, the the fee for the Copley Hospital's DRB hearing of two hundred fifty dollars. 
I have a motion by Jess. Is there a second? Second. Second by Judy. Any further discussion on this? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed unanimously. Thank you. Thank you very kindly, folks. I appreciate your time and have a good evening. Thank you. You as well. Thank you. All right, number two. <laughs> Decision on zoning bylaws. Todd. Uh, you, I, I was asked to draft a motion for uh, the select board and the trustees, but we do have that in the package. It looks like that. I have it. It's a done as a. Yep. Anyone else need one? I'll take a couple more. Uh, sure. Take a look at it. Uh, no, it's okay. Okay, Brian, you got one or no? I don't. Can you share and then we'll share? I don't have that yet. I could have another one. Oh, okay. You get me one. So that's your motion. At the last uh, end of the public hearing and then your joint meeting with the trustees, there seems to be common consent, common ground between the two boards uh, thus far regarding uh, moving forward without the steep slopes and moving forward with only striking the road bonus section of the conservation subdivision density bonus. So that's what you all, majority of each board came down to. That's what you have in front of you. All right, does someone want to make a motion? I'll make the motion to approve the warned zoning changes as proposed while omitting only the new steep slope regulations from revised section 342 and only omitting subsection C from section 510, paragraph 5, section 5 of the conservation subdivisions bylaws density bonus. I have a motion by Don. Is there a second? Second. Second by Brian. Any further discussion on this motion? Um, is there any way that we could, and, and probably this isn't appropriate, but we had talked about addressing this at a later time? That's in the second motion, Judy. The, uh, are you talking about like the road part for it that you want it done? Yes. Yeah, that's in the second motion you're gonna make tonight. Yeah. Thanks. If you have, the, if you have that piece of paper in front of you. Are you, Judy, are you talking about addressing the steep slope issue or the, um, or I thought we were going to, yeah, I thought we were going to be look into that also. I thought we were going to take another look for, at that in 2023. Is that correct? I thought so too. Hmm. There is another motion coming to direct okay. the planning council in regards to 2023 zoning changes. Right. Okay. This is more, but this one is more about um, the short-term rentals. This is about, yeah. Go ahead, Graham. Um, <clears throat> I wasn't available for the previous discussion, public comment period. Is it uh, too late to ask the board to consider um, striking another uh, section of the amended bylaws? We can't do that tonight, isn't that correct? That's correct. Yeah. We, yeah. But we can consider it for the future. Okay. Like that's why we, the trustees and the select board didn't agree on a couple of these items. Mm -hmm. And so that's why we're leaving some things out and to be discussed and figured out at a later date, right, Todd? Correct. You can't change things, but you can still strike things. Yeah. That's what we're doing tonight. You're, you're, you're leaving things like I would say on the cutting room floor. So leaving you're I like the zoning term. proposed. But you're leaving out items X, Y, and Z. Yeah. Is there um, any? I, I'd like to say that I'm I'm going to vote for um, for this because I want to see the majority of the zoning bylaws um, go through. Um, but I do um, I do have reservations about striking the steep slope um, regulation. <coughs> I am for steep slope regulations, but so I just want them to go on the record, um, but I still will um, agree to um, the rest of this because I think all in all, it's, um, it's good. It's important. Thank you, Jess. I, I was gonna say something very similar. When we had the meeting with the village trustees, um, it was very clear that the two boards were not going to vote for the steep slopes. So rather than, it was clear that the trustees were going to vote against this. Mm -hmm. yeah. We never, as a select board, 
took anything close to a straw poll. I'm not going to suggest how we all would have voted. I know I would have voted with you, Jess. I agree. I, I think there is reasons to have steep slope regulations. I thank the Planning Council for bringing that forward. Uh, I think there's a, a lot of reasons for having them, especially as I talk to a few people in neighboring towns and what they've got. Um, and then when it came to the conservation subdivision bylaws, we, we basically, I think the two boards agreed that striking C made sense. Mm -hmm. All right, any further discussion on this motion that's on the floor? All in favor say aye. 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 Judy? Aye. Any opposed? The motion is passed unanimously. You have another motion? There is another motion here, but it, it's probably not complete. Um, Judy, what was your concern before moving forward? Todd had talked about the uh, name the we were going to put some information in, some uh, language in about the zoning director giving us a nudge when we're. And that, that's the motion. I'll read it right here. It's uh, member blank moves to direct the planning council to ensure the section 207 historic district as shown on the new zoning map to edit the recently revised road naming zoning bylaw to add in at the direction of the zoning administrator and to study allowing homeowners to have two short-term rentals in the town instead of the newly regulated primary property only. <coughs> that's what I walked out of that meeting with. And that's something that's going to be looked at in 2023, is that correct? Correct, these, so right. these three items that go on the work list. Okay. And I thought steep slopes was also one of those other ones. I didn't put steep slopes and the trustees are over the last three. I didn't put steep slopes on here. I didn't catch that as part of this, but you can't keep suggesting something that can't get approved by the village. If you, this board wants that, I think you need to talk to the trustees. I mean, planning council has been down this road many times before and it's a, it's a dead end. There's only so many times well, you beat your head against the wall. The makeup of the trustees might change someday. True. And the select board too. Select board. True, yeah. <laughs> so you can always do it in the future, but as I mean, unless the trustees are changing and they've changed a couple times over over the last three times we've done this and right. it's, are you just concerned that it'll be like um, it'll create a longer wait time for the whole process if we keep? I mean, what's your, what's your the trustees thinking? are the trustees. Just trying to understand your thinking behind like not saying well. Look, I'm worried about not looking at it again because I do. I would eventually like to see some steep slope regulation, but I. But if you are, um, if you're saying like if we keep putting it in, it's just going to keep dragging out this process like year after year after year. I, I don't know if you can speak to that or if you want to. Yeah, we, the trustees were pretty clear. The trustees will split our zoning bylaws over it. Yeah. So we're no longer one town plan and two town plans. Only yes. one zoning bylaw, two zoning bylaws. So that is like the, uh, is a nuclear football. You yeah. can't go there. Unless the trustees change or change your heart. If you yeah. want to meet with them and have some sort of yeah. uh, conference committee how to come to something reasonable. Yeah. I mean, the planning council serves to parents. Yeah, I understand. Uh, yeah, I understand. I'm just yeah. like, I guess. Um, One thing, Adam, we not. We just can't move forward the other half. It doesn't work. Right. I guess yeah. my question is like, if we keep looking at it, like maybe eventually, you know. Maybe, maybe down the road. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the board you've been looking at it. Yeah, you've been looking at it for a long, for a long time. time. Yeah, this is time real relaxed. I've yeah. seven years we've done this. Yeah, 15 years. Yeah. <clears throat> Specifically, Steve Slopes has died three times out of trusty level. Mm -hmm. It's been the same playbook every time. Exactly. But it could change. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the board did the, the the board members change. Uh, sure, we brought that up, but I don't think there's any point to bring it up in the next year unless the truck the same trustee board. Right. I mean, and it will be the same trustee board. Yeah, I don't believe, I don't believe anybody can their seats as far as we know. Yes, at the very most, there's going to be one member changing, and that's not no, going to do it. Enough. No. So, do you want to make a motion on? Sure, I'll make a motion to direct the Planning Council to ensure that the Section 207 Historic District properties are shown on the new zoning map, to edit the recently revised road naming zoning bylaws, a bylaw to add in at the direction of the zoning administrator, and to study allowing homeowners to have two short-term rental properties in the town instead of the newly regulated property, primary property only. I have a motion by Don. Is there a second? Second. Second by Brian. Is there any further discussion on this motion? <clears throat> Etienne? I had to uh, cut out of the last meeting 
before I think you finish the short-term rental part. Just so I'm clear, two short-term rental properties in the town. Is that the entire town? The town includes a village. No, the, tr the trustees were no on that. They're pretty subtle now. So okay. I think it's only, we're still splitting it where the town and village. So it's only town walls, and village. Yeah. So this motion is just for the yeah, town. Yeah, I was sitting next to the trustees. The trustees it's said no for, no for the village. It's clarify just, that yeah. because the town normally means the whole the whole thing. Yeah, town, the yeah, boundaries. it's just the town, just, just within the town outside the village. So you can bend the motion and say outside that. the village if you want. Hmm. Oh, it's good you brought that up. Okay. Because yeah. right now it says in the town, which would include the village. Right. So you can amend it to say outside the village if you like. Okay. So I amend that to say in the town but outside the village? That should be in the yeah. in the motion yep. for sure. I think it's fair. <clears throat> Got it. Okay. Okay. Or only in the town or, or yeah. Is there any further discussion on this motion? Yeah, I have a question, and I don't know if it's related to the motion or not, but if we're able to split the village and town with short-term rentals, and that's been the case until up, up until now, why couldn't we do a steep slopes um, village and town designation? That's me. The, that bylaw yeah. in front of you, the trustees won't vote for it. I mean, that short, the, short, the steep slopes were uh, applicable in the town outside the village. The trustees, I mean... That was, that was like the only thing we could do other than we have done the last two times. I mean, they're going to split your zoning bylaws into two towns. Two I get what Judy's asking is why can we have two different rules about short-term rentals, but not two different rules about... Because they said no. What? Because they said because no. Because they said no? Well, yeah. why, well, why did they have purview over... Is this what you're asking? Why did they have say over... Because, because it's a joint zoning bylaw. Until we merge into one municipality or two municipalities, uh, just like Greenmount Arena, for example, or the Arthur's project, even the, or the Greenmount Arena is a better example. That's located in the town. The trustees were threatening to pull out the zoning bylaw over the Greenmount Arena thing. Yeah, they were. If the select board didn't vote to take it away from a recreational use and allow the business use there, mm -hmm. you, you, you basically the trustees control the village. You control outside the village. You control the town as a select board. But you both, because it's a joint bylaw, really have veto power over each other. So when the trustees don't like something in the town, they can threaten to split the zoning bylaw, and it's pretty much dead, if, unless you go down that road. Same thing for the town. If you guys don't like something in the village and threaten to split the zoning by law, the trustees will have to back down at that point, too. So, I mean, our Morristown, Morris thing, it's a mess, and your zoning's a mess because of it. I wish we were all one, but I can't talk to the trustees about that because they don't want to hear it. it is, I, I have it tried to talk to them. It? It's, it's a veto. You both have veto. You can, they control the village, you control the town, but you both have veto power over each other. It's interesting that night when we talked about steep slopes, their example was outside of the village. Correct. Yes, that's yep. right. Yep. Exactly. And they vote on things outside the village. <clears throat> it's just the way it is. It's a joint, it's a joint zoning bylaw. Can you word it sleep, uh, steep slope outside the village? Like you just reworded your thing? Right. It, it was worded like that. Right, that's uh, great. So it was worded like mm -hmm. that. It but was. They still, uh, but they still yeah. have to just, say. Just like no. the amount of rain. Yeah, they they can veto the zoning bylaw. They say no. Yeah, they say that when they won't vote to approve it, then we're then the whole thing's dead in the water. You got to work together until you're a joint community. Until you're a joint community, you're stuck with each other. Mm -hmm. yeah. What Good. would it take to unite them both and stop this? <laughs> yeah, we tried. I know we tried, Brian, a few years ago. What, what do you have to do? It used to be a lot worse than this. Yeah. We used to, Could you bring it to the old board? We didn't town, get along. Could the town meeting vote on it? And I don't know. That's a good question. That's a very good question, Tom. I don't. Because maybe the town could, could vote say, and say, look. I think it's a charter. So the village has its own charter. It's a change to charter, right? It has to go to the legislature. So you got the village and the town did. I'm 1980, an MOU that gave the village road crew and the village road property buildings to the town. Mm -hmm. So there's part of that. You've done partial mergers before, but uh, for everything I do, I have you, I have 24 bosses. You guys, the trustees, the planning, DRB, and right. you, you all have a say. So until you merge further, really, I think either expand the village charter to encompass Morris Town, so we're one community, or distinguish the village charter to distinguish the village, which they just give up their power for nothing. I'm not sure why they do that. So I think the other op the option is to make it bigger. But that's just me. But until you do that, yeah. I mean, we're stuck in this. Yeah. Same and situation. we we have gone to great lengths to try to to 
come together like yeah. the whole idea of we had our meeting at the golf course and had a meal yeah. like break bread and yeah. talk about things and, and it, was great. That. That was cool. it was great we we talked about more things that first time we got together and mm -hmm. worked out things so we weren't paving something and they weren't ripping it up the next week and that happened for years and years in your town plan there's a language in there that you voted to approve that's that work that uh the select board within year one you're just gonna get a letter on this from the planning council at some point it's supposed to jointly appoint a committee with the trustees to study this and do pros and cons and potentially put a plan into action to actually make us one community so that's in the town plan we voted on it so it takes you and the trustees appointing the committee and someone staffing it but it's doable i mean in theory it's on your to-do list right I think it's an election. I know Essex Town and Village have just yeah. done it a lot. Mm. Yeah, that piece too. And that took multiple votes in yeah. multiple years, a long time, many decades. Over and over and over again. David, you had a comment? Yeah. So, just for clarification, could you summarize what it is now that's allowed in the village versus what's now allowed in the towns as far as this, this two, this rental? business as far as a homeowner who owns in the village can only have what, one rental or something like this? Or? Do you want to take a stab at that, Todd? Yeah, so uh, since the five years ago, I mean, just like uh, Steep Slopes, short-term rentals has gone up three times now for regulation. The trustees like the regulation. They don't want non-owner occupied short-term rentals. They want neighbors accountable to neighbors. If you have guests over, you rent the you your way for the Christmas or New Year's and you're rowdy party guests, people parking on the lawn, that kind of thing. Noise, trash. So it's just to clarify, it's short term rentals, it's not like it's not how they want an apartment or a duplex. It's it's thirty, it's 30 Airbnb, days or more. It's Airbnbs and the RBOs and that kind of thing. Correct, yes. And the town at the time, the last two times he said, We like the grandless growth. we we have properties that there are no neighbors in earshot. We don't want the restrictions. So uh, at the time, people were building houses for short-term rentals. The town select board at the time, previous select boards like that. So they chose not to have any limitations on short-term rentals. So uh, I can build 700. Well, before this zoning process took place, I could have built 732 houses in the town and the short-term rentals in the mall. Now, with the zoning change warned and approved tonight, you, we all have the same regulations. You can only short-term rent your primary property. Yeah, we'll be out of a primary property plus one in the town. It's really plus two, actually. Maybe, right, yeah, yeah, it would be two. And the village, you can only do your own property? Is that yeah. It's both the village and the town, I only do your own property. You can't start buying up your neighbor's houses and turn them into short-term rentals anymore. Right. But everyone who has one is our, is, is yeah. our yeah. yeah, and there's a lot of them. <laughs> yep, there are. All right, any further discussion on the same motion? With the amended motion, with the village instead of the town. Yes. 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 All in favor say aye. 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 Judy? Aye. Any opposed? The motion is passed unanimously. Todd, thanks for all the work you've done on this yeah. over and over and over again. Happy help. Thank you, everybody. It's not all mm -hmm. kind of Yeah. No, that too. Just, I'd like to say, I still think we get along pretty good with our trustees. Mm -hmm. so. We, we do. A lot better than a lot of towns around yes. here. Yes, agreed. Oh, we can keep it that way. Yeah, I, yeah that's uh, Brian's definitely right. We get along better with them than we ever have. Yes. As far as I know. Yes. And um, we're going to keep going the same way. There's going to be things we don't agree on, and that, that's just the way it is. I mean, you have two employees in the room that are paid by both the town and the village. You've never had that before, seven, eight years ago. Right. Well, what could happen? They could go to one board, and they could get onto this board, and you still vote the same. So. It's That's true. Here. That's true. Yeah. Might still be a stalemate. Yeah. Dwayne. Um, you could go back to the original. That was the water and light trustees. Right. That's right. That, that was long. Be, they would handle water, light, and sewer. Yes. And the a utility. Would be the town. Yeah. Yeah. They, they're a utility and the rest is the town. Exactly. There's a statutory way to do that. It's called the Joint Planning Commission. Uh, I think it's 24 BSA 430407. I have to check the site. Um, the trustees in the past have un been unwilling to take their finger out of the zoning pie, for example. They like to have the same what happens in the village. So they do. You'd have to negotiate some reason for them to vote for that. Yeah. I sat with the chair of the trustees a few times trying to work out a path forward, but and I thought it was going to happen, but then the chair changed. Mm -hmm. And so it sort of fizzled away. The chair change, their chair changes every year. Yeah. So I, we were close actually at one point, but now we're not so close anymore.
simplify some things. Oh, a lot of things, wouldn't it? And for Todd, too. It would probably immediately increase probably like two to three hours of productivity each week for not describing the Morris. Well, Morris thing, thing, how things work like we just did for the last 25 minutes. Yeah. I mean, Sarah okay. and I do this every I'm, week. I'm struggling with a state with a check I got sent here to the village that is really the town written out to the village, and I can't get the state to correct it. Right. How much money would you say? Well, well, in the town plan, it talks about the village itself, so the ratepayers. Uh, pay taxes on village, village property or water and light property that's outside the village. So that substation, electrical substation on Morristown Corners Road, for example, Katie's Falls Hydro, those are all taxable. And it's not because of Act 60, it's not like, oh, we're just trading money. Most of that money goes to the education fund. We're sending up more than $100,000 every year to Montpelier out of state because we can't agree on Morrisville and Morristown. And honestly, it's a shame. Right. But you know what Tom says is true is that maybe pressure from the community members at town meeting or something like that. Yeah. Urge people to come it's together, take, especially if it means money. It, it, does, it does mean money. And yeah. there's the common refrain, although it's always been like that, why change it? We lose hundreds of thousand dollars every year. We were very inefficient as staff because of it. So it does mean, it means things every day and every day going forward until we fix it. Yeah. Food for thought. Okay. All right. Next, uh, we we not doing the personnel policy, so approve the warrants. I'll make a motion. We approve the warrants. Second. Yeah. Motion by Don and a second by Brian. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Thanks, Judy. Warrants are approved. Next, the TA report, Eric. So uh, we've Next been working on uh, three things most recently: the budget, the the budget, and the budget. So it has been eating up the large majority of our time. And uh, a lot of great work being done, great suggestions. Uh, cost cutting is the, the name of the day and trying to trim where we can. Uh, the renovations, the upstairs for this year are complete. Uh, the second level of the renovations for next year, uh, we have the plans and uh, in the budget, you'll see the proposed price when we do the general government budget. Uh, We've done uh, some minor repair over the library. They have a leak that has been there for several years, apparently, in the basement. Um, there's a hole in the ceiling, and the water drips off from an I-beam. And uh, I took uh, the estimator from DBI Construction, Michael Downey, uh, over, and he took a look at it. And uh, the, we have some repointing work to do on the older section of, of the uh, library. And there, it appeared that uh, the section over, uh, or in the vicinity of where the leak is inside, may have been the culprit. So uh, they had their mason come over. He repointed the brick. Uh, then we got this great rainstorm and re realized that even though the repointing of the brick needed to be done, it did not stop the water leak. So uh, they've been back over. Mike did find a piece of flashing where a nail had pulled out. And that some of the old asphalt caulking that holds the flashing down had come loose. So he's going to take care of that piece, and we'll hope that that is the newest new fix for that. But So they've been doing a little work on the library over there. Uh, you have a letter in front of you. I, I didn't put it as an agenda item. I just get put it as an FYI. It came to you from the Planning Council um, as one of the items on the town plan, and your year one objective is to uh, look to convert the interior lighting in town owned buildings to LED bulbs to create additional energy and cost savings. Um, Efficiency Vermont is going to partner with the town in order to do this. And I'm just letting you know that I'm going to be reaching out to Efficiency Vermont. I don't think anybody would object to us looking into a cost savings for, for doing such a thing, but I need to talk to them about total cost. This is not something I had budgeted for this current budget year. So I need to make sure that we can afford to do the project, uh, see what there are for reimbursements, um, knowing that the uh, currently the incentives that are in place are going to sunset on June 30th. So we're going to see what we can get done. If we can get some of it done, that would be better than none of it. But uh, again, budgetary constraints is what I'm most cautious of right now, but I'd like to engage with the Efficiency of Vermont to get this process started. Yeah, that's really idea what it would cost? Not a clue. Okay. And this is, um, 
interior lighting or interior and exterior? Interior lighting. Okay. Well, I mean, if there's an outside light, certainly we're going to replace the yeah, bulb right. for an outside light too, but it's primarily interior lighting. Okay. Um, I had a discussion with uh, Tina today. Her husband is familiar with the lights in our office area. And those lights actually, uh, there's a, a retrofit LED bulb mm -hmm. that would go into those lights. So changing bulbs out wouldn't be right. nearly as expensive as changing the entire fixture, okay. but that's just here. The highway garage mm -hmm. on Cochrane Road might be a different story. If we're having to change fixtures, now we're talking about a lot more money, yeah. uh, getting electricians involved. Um, it just remains to be seen what, what can be done. Again, efficiency from one of the experts on that stuff, not me. So. Yeah, I'd like to have them come and do a do a survey of our buildings and uh, then talk about costs and yeah. see what we can do. When will they do that? I I've got to reach out and talk to them oh, okay. uh, based on scheduling. Uh -huh. I know we did it at Concept Two at the plant a couple of years ago, and they've already paid for themselves the fixtures, mm -hmm. and our, we cut cut the amount the monthly amount by a lot. Also, uh, adding occupancy sensors in some rooms. Mm -hmm where you walk in and come on and they go off. Mm -hmm. That actually saves a lot of money off the mm -hmm. bill. It's amazing. I, I think our bill dropped like $5,000 or something. It was crazy. Oh, real money. money. Yeah, wow. real money. You know, well, we're all electric anyway, all the ovens and everything, yeah. but it was it was more than worth it having that done. Mm -hmm. so, and some of those uh, programs have free, um, free or very low cost uh, fixtures. Mm -hmm. You know, so and they were giving away LED bulbs when they came and stuff like that. So, what well, do I ask? What's definitely good to look into? Because mm -hmm. save a lot of money. I think that when I come here, any public building, this one needs to be signed. And that's all I have. All right. Any questions for Eric? Thanks, Eric. Next, select board concerns. Don. Um. Really, thank you, Todd, for all the work that went into the bylaws. I'm sorry Etienne's not here to say the same to him. And you've obviously done an awful lot of work uh, getting all that together and educating people like myself about about all these uh, about all these changes and why they were needed. Not over yet. I got trustees Wednesday night. <laughs> um, we're almost there. And given the conversation tonight. The public might think I'm crazy, but last Wednesday meeting with the trustees really was a uh, a beneficial experience for me. It was it, it was a great experience. It was uh, it was good to get the two boards together. I know there's people up. Well, all three of you have had those opportunities before. I haven't, so it was nice to get to know them, and it was nice to it was nice to hash out our differences, and it was done in a very uh, a very amenable way. So I appreciate that as well. That's it. Very good. Yes. Uh, I have a couple. Um, one, um, just sorry, on a positive note, um, I attended a bunch of the festivities on Saturday the, for, for um, through the Festival of Lights. Um, ran into Trisha, met um, Santa for the first time with my daughter. <coughs> the Civic Center, I, I, um, that's such a beautiful resource that we have in this town. Um, and Paula, oh, did Paula leave already? Um, well, I, hopefully no kids are watching this. I kind of doubt they are. Um, Paula was an awesome um, Mrs. Claus. I didn't actually, I like kind of almost didn't recognize her and then we were leaving. Um, the library hosted a really great um, soup and song event. Um, and a lot of the teenagers that I work with, um, some that, um, you know, like struggle to find um, really positive like opportunities or, um, or feedback at school were really shining at that event. They were reading to um, to kids. Um, they were singing. Um, they really it seemed that they really had a place that they belonged. And I believe that they're all on the teen advisory council there at the library. Um, and then also a bunch of um, community members brought in soup, and I got to eat some really great soup um, <laughs> by some um, pretty legendary um, local cooks. And um, and then we. And in our morning, um, at a just slightly drizzly um, draft course ride down the Oxbow. And that was just the beginning. That was just the first hour of events. So um, Trisha and everyone involved did a great job. And um, it was, I mean, my daughter was like, um, you know, cloud nine with all this. So, and we just saw so many community members out. Um, 
um, and I got to talk to people that I'd never met, and um, you know, it was it was just really cool, to, like for all those two events to be um, um, to be offered. And Trisha just did a great job, and everyone else who was involved. Was, I know a lot of people made that happen. Um, there, like even the the um, even the movie theater offered free Christmas movies for or holiday movies for kids that afternoon. Um, I know I, I don't know if this is like the right place to bring it up, but I know I took, talked to you about it a little bit, Eric. But um, I just want to say personally, I've been having a hard time with the um, budget schedule and all the, the meetings every single week and sometimes twice a week. Um, I wonder if um, there's a way, like in the future, that we could talk about um, how I know it might make the nights much longer, but how um, I would prefer to stay later and have fewer meetings. Um, I know it's hard sometimes to be fresh, um, and I know it's really important to be considering um, the budget with a fresh mind, but um, for me, it's been pretty tough to um, make it all happen, and um, I know we all have different responsibilities and, um, at home and at work, um, but I, I think it would be something to consider for, for future, just um, how, if there are any ways that we can make it a more streamlined process, or, um, and or just go at it like for bigger chunks of time. So that's just my piece. Um, and I do really appreciate um, everything that goes into the budget process. And I know that it's um, arduous. And we just get to see the final um, paperwork <laughs> that you present to us. And um, so I, I do really, I don't want you to think that. I don't appreciate that. Um, but I just, I've been struggling a little bit with the, the schedule. So that's all I have. Understood. Yeah. If I can just put a quick plug in for Mac. Mac has a lot to do with the Festival yes, of Lights. Yes, yes, yes. And the, the free movies that are offered are necessarily free. Mac, oh, Mac subsidizes, Mac, it Mac subsidizes the movies in a large way. Yeah. I uh, appreciate our local theater yeah. uh, working with them, though. But uh, Mac does a huge behind the scenes. They never look for recognition. Yeah. But there they are, and, and they do a tremendous amount for our downtown. Yeah. Uh, they're a fantastic organization. Yeah. Okay. I'm all set. You're all set? Hey, Judy. Yes, sir. You finally got to me. It's your turn. All right. Um, I'll turn on the video. Um, th by the way, this is the first I've done a Zoom um, since the sound system's been changed, and it's excellent. Mm -hmm. Excellent. I can, hear, I can hear everybody, even those people not in the microphone, but it's really nice when they come up to the microphone. Nice. And I want to thank the Planning Council also for all the work they've done on the, the zoning changes. And the um, the area uh, the where the fence and the trees and the lights on Main Portland and Congress Street that intersection looks excellent. I don't know who's doing that was, but it was great. And I'm really glad the personnel policy was postponed. I heard from several people from the town offices, and I I heard their concerns, and and I'm glad it's being looked at a little more closely. That's it. Thank you. I can give the credit to uh, the, the Main Street lighting and fence that went up to uh, Tim and Erica Bryan, the owners of uh, Rural Resources out of Stowe. They are the property owners there. And I called uh, Tim on Friday and thanked him very, very much on behalf of the community uh, because that really filled a, a beautiful a gap with some beauty uh, during the holiday season. And he was very appreciative of that. I've seen lots of comments on Front Porch Forum and other social media about that uh, addition. I think they went above and beyond. Three days of uh, Green Mountain landscaping in there was not um, w without pain to the wallet. And I, I just really appreciate, I think everybody does, how beautiful that has made the downtown look. Yeah. It's a nice neighborly thing to do. Yeah, that was, uh, Eric stole my comment. Was, my phone's been buzzing since it happened. And um, so I found out through Todd exactly who did it. And I actually saw Buckwheat out there planting trees himself. What? And I, I wanted to stop and give him a attaboy. I saw him directing things. I don't know. I don't know if he was a grand, no, he was, he was playing the tree when I saw it. I, I don't want to say we could get a video. Uh, <laughs> uh, so um, live trees or not? They're live trees. Uh, I, I don't know if they have root balls. I think they just drilled holes in the ground and stuck them there for the season. I don't oh, think they're meant to be. Oh, I have to ask Buckwheat that. But, I thought they were live. Yeah, they're not live trees. They're, they're, they're not? They're Christmas trees. They're, they're cut. No. So they will die. Yes. The intent is to have that as green space uh, for the summer. And as Tim tries to figure out what the redevelopment options are, yeah. I have the plans back for a future select board meeting for the inter oh. alignment in the intersection. Okay. And yeah. Tim's going to make his mind if he wants to do it or not to. Right. Okay. 
Right. If you believe Bob, they won't die. Right. They won't die. <laughs> all right. And that's all I have. Yeah. Next, community concerns. You have any community concerns tonight? Tom? I have one non binding question. <laughs> non binding? Yeah. Non binding. I would just like to know if you, I assume you received my email, and I just want to know if I'm going to get our hands back. There was a question, and then there was a few next. No. Did you see that email? I, no. Tom, Tom and I get several emails. <laughs> before. I don't know which one he's referring yeah. to. I'll, I'll double check, Tom, and I'll, I'll reply to you tomorrow. Okay. That's, that's all. Okay. All right. Any more community concerns? <coughs> Any other business? Make a motion we adjourn? No. Oh, no. Sarah's coming. Wait, wait. She nodded. Sorry. Silent nod. If anybody's interested in running for select board, the deadline is January 30th at 5. And you need a petition. I just want to get the word out there. Um, and I just wanted to give a kudos to Sophie Beck and the Turkey Trot. I'm not sure if anybody's done that yet. It was a project that was started by a high school student um, in collaboration, the school with the town. There were over 100 community members that came out to the first one. Um, and we've just gotten raving reviews um, from everybody that went. And so just wanted to give kudos to everybody involved, especially Sophie, for the great idea. Great. Thank you. Thanks, Sarah. Marley has right. her hand up. Who does? Marley. <laughs> we can't see it. I don't see Can you it. hear me? Yeah. Can you Hello? hear me? Yes. Hello. Yes, we can hear you. Yeah. Can you um, introduce yourself? Hi, this is Kathy Chafee. It comes over as Carly. Oh, okay. Um, How are you? I just had a quick question. I guess I, I'm not sure on this. Did um, the town buy the TGU building? Did we buy the TGU building? This building here? Ten years ago. Uh, oh, okay. I guess I'm... Old, that's old news then. Thank you. That's all I wanted to know. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. Anytime, Kat. Yeah. All right. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? Yes. I have a motion to adjourn. Oh, okay. Ryan, I have a second. I'll say all in favor, say aye. 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 Thanks, Judy. We're now adjourned. <laughs>